Sometimes my parents tuck me in so tight I feel like I'm going to suffocate. Smothering parents might be better than ones that don't seem to care at all. The girl stayed on Facebook. I stayed on Facebook, even though my mom thought I wasn't. Over the summer, the chats with my boyfriend got intense. We loved each other. At least, I thought I loved him, but when school started up again, everything fell apart. My best friend, who seemed so nice, smiling all the time, invited me to sleep over and play this game she called The, the game, game of Trust, trust where you listen, listen to each, each other's secrets. secrets. So this girl told her best friend about her boyfriend, and then the girl's, the best friend started acting really weird after that. And then as soon as the girl got home, she went online and found out that her best friend and her boyfriend had dated. Oh boy, this shit just got real. <laughs> <laughs> The best friend started sending her these really vicious texts and posts, and a whole other group of girls joined in. She I tried, tried to, to stop them, them but, but I didn't know how. Those bullies were vicious. The girl's mom found out, complained to the school, and then switched her to a new one. The mom grounded her from the internet. She took away everything, but as soon as the girl got her phone back, she just opened up new accounts that her mom didn't know about, and it all started up again. Just meaner. I never had a problem with the person, Andy. I only bullied her online because it's what I do. I'm a catfish. You know, someone who poses as someone else online. I like that I can hide. Be somebody else. It's funny. No one will know if I'm telling the truth or not because I'm inside my computer. I could be anything or anyone I want to be. Monster? Monster. They think I'm a monster. At least I'm a beautiful monster. I learned my makeup from the greats. Liz Taylor, Audrey Hepburn, Marlena Dietrich, the works. Am I only a monster because I know how to get what I want? I have the power and I know how to use it. Beauty is power. Woods are power. Money is power. Why do we look at people of power with such fear? We all have the potential. People like me on the web, unlike in real life. People don't like me, and I don't care. Yeah! <laughs> I feel like I belong, because no one really knows me. What the hell do you want, drama queen? Do you mind if I say something? God, what? You're always looking for attention. I just have one thing to say, that you'll never have to hear from me again. Then get it the fuck over with and stop wasting my time. I don't know if you remember, but I do. In middle school, we rode the same bus on the way home, and it was full of hot dust, grit between teeth and the folds of clothes. We were the displaced, the insecure, acne-speckled kids whose parents were too busy to pick us up at the end of the day. Shuttled from house to house, home to home. The, the bus driver, he had, to, he had to assign us seats because we were too loud and crazy. So I sat at the very front alone. You sat in the back because you were popular. Of course, I was popular, unlike you. <laughs> <laughs> Once your friends asked me if I was a lesbian. I, I told them no, but they didn't believe me. So the ride home on that too hot and sweaty school bus became unbearable because I could hear the rumors being whispered under the clanging of all that metal. And I knew in my gut that the graffiti drawn on the seat in front of me, right, right where I could see it, was by you. That brown, scratched up seat with the springs jumping out of it like broken jack-in-the-boxes, the letters scrawled in red sharpie. The first time you s I saw what you wrote, I cried. <coughs> well, 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 well. <laughs> Bullies are everywhere, not just on the internet. Did you see it during lunch? Tell me. What do you mean, tell you? This is the fourth day in a row. I've been out. Surely you've heard. I'm asking if you saw. I've neither heard nor seen be specific. You know her at least. Her who? Her. Oh, Rebecca. What about her? Well, this is the fourth day. The fourth day of what? <laughs> if you haven't seen, just wait. Wait till when? Tomorrow at lunch. Wait by the girls' locker room. It'll be good. Trust me. 
The back door to the boys' locker room faces a forest. The back door to the girls' locker room opens straight into a herd of picnic tables. You have to time opening the door not to expose anybody. I have to pass this door every time I walk to the middle school equivalent of a playground. This afternoon, I'm stepping silently behind Kate. The melted snow is sucking my feet into the grass. I should be smelling mud and damp air, but I can smell her. Her lotion is cotton candy. Her shampoo is berries. She is dessert. I've never been this close to her before, not even during class. B.O. from unshowered kids overpowers anything else in the room. I'm not any better. I wear a hoodie all day, every day, inside, outside, heater, air conditioner. <laughs> Kate pauses, motioning me to stop. Lunch is almost over, and Rebecca has gym immediately after. Kate steps onto the concrete, but the snow keeps sucking my feet into the ground. My toes are frozen. The bell is waiting to ring, refusing to ring. Rebecca will have to pass a field, pass a basketball court, and the picnic tables to get to the locker in time. Kate rocks back on her heels and checks her phone. I don't think I can do this. Sure you can. What did she do to deserve this anyway? She's always been nice to me. <sighs> Why? Because I say so. She's a disgusting little pig that shouldn't even be alive in the first place. Anyway, if you back out on me now, I swear I'll make it so that she won't even talk to you when I'm through with you. Dyke! Dyke. Do you know how long it has been since you have called your mother? Two months, Wally. No, you have only texted me. And you know I worry about you being in Florida. I know you are busy. I am busy too. What with the celebration of my new grandchild, we are going over to your sister's house for the party tonight. But you know, Bissy's husband is very stingy with the food and alcohol, so we have to get over there very quickly. The entire family will be there. My name is Joe Thomas. I'm 17 years old. And I would like to call my mom, please. My name is Joe Thomas. I'm 17 years old. And I would like to call my mom, please. My name is Joe Thomas. I'm 17 years old. And I would like to call my mom, please. Now, because of the party and the celebration, I cannot stay long. But don't you worry. Daddy has been keeping me up with your progress. He has been stalking you on book face. <laughs> I want you to promise me that you will always be very careful, very aware of your surroundings at all times. I don't know what you are talking about. These are my shoes. Why do you refuse to believe that I actually work? Does it look like I would do something like that? I mean, really. You know what I don't get? If I'm having an allergic reaction, and I'm in dying need of an EpiPen, and there just so happens to be a gas station across the street, and I walk in and I take an EpiPen, is that theft? Or... If my mom needs a surgery, and we don't have the money, and I stick up a Walgreens, is that robbery? I want you to promise me that you will never be alone after dark, and you will never be in areas where white men congregate. <laughs> and if you are at a gas station, and you see a lone white man coming towards you, run inside, mingle with the other people now. <laughs> All I'm saying is I didn't do anything wrong, officer, you could check my Instagram or Facebook, I'm actually not who you think I am. I am only telling you this because of something I have read on the internet. It is called Stand Your Ground. It is where a white man could shoot you for being a black boy and maybe get away with it. Hmm. Can I see my phone? Hmm? Then I can show you my friends, my family. Come home now, where it is safe, where there is family and friends. Of course it is safe in Nigeria. And let if somebody shoots you here, it's not because you're black. Because they don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Joe Thomas. I'm 17 years old and I would like to call my mom, please. And our children no longer believe the stories they are sold. In order to make your grass greener, you first have to water it. Necesita agua. 
Sounds to me like that girl's mom probably thought she was doing the right thing. She thought everything was okay, but it turns out the girl's so-called social media friends were constantly messaging her. Even though they were tearing her apart, she just kept going back for more. Your life is a mirror. Maybe she needed that attention. Covered with dust. No matter what they said. Doused in water. It's like she was addicted. Engulfed in rust. The internet is like a drug. When I'm in it, I'm so happy that I don't want it to stop. It feels like I'm connected to the whole world, but without having to deal with people. And whenever I want something, I can get it with the push of a few buttons. And what do you really have? Yeah. Just a bunch of shit they make you think you need. Yeah, but it all looks so great. <laughs> when I finally do pull myself out and away from the computer, which takes a lot of effort, I look up, and it's not as vibrant or alive out here as it is in there. And whenever somebody tries to talk to me, I get angry because it feels like they're invading my personal space. Well, at least you're out of it. Yeah, but it's never for very long. I'm just so used to feeling alone, like connected, but alone, you know? I'm just so unhappy and bored when I'm not online that I just keep going back to it. This dullness out here keeps driving me back in there, even if I feel sick to my stomach about it. It's called social media, but it's not social at all. It's very lonesome, actually. It's anti-social social media. <laughs> Hashtag 40 days without Facebook. Hashtag take the challenge. Seriously, impossible. Find out who you really are. Today sucked. Yesterday sucked. Tomorrow will most likely suck. <laughs> it comes to a point where you have to think, what is the point? The only common denominator in all of this is me. I need to change. My Nana used to say, always be yourself. Well, that was a long time ago. Nowadays, always be yourself unless you can be Beyonce. Always <laughs> be Beyonce. <laughs> Do you hear me, Google? Do you get it? It's not that I really want to be Beyonce, but I don't have to be me either. I don't want to be me anymore. Okay, that's a little dramatic. I don't want to be me right now. I'd rather be Lou. I thought about being Mary Lou, but that's a little bit too proper for what I'm going for. <laughs> Just Lou, short for Louise, who is hot. Girl with the guy's name hot. She has tons of friends, and she never has bad days. She's always cheery. Her Facebook profile isn't even done being made yet, and she already has 15 friend requests and Facebook messages. Are you feeling alone and confused? Yes, quite. What are you doing? Maybe I could help you. I need a hug. How many friends do you have? Six hundred. Seven hundred left. I have way more friends than you do. What a friend! Find who's missing in your life. Match.com. eHarmony. Find God's match for you. ChristianMingle.com. JayFace.com. ManCrunch.com. Beatit.com. FarmersMeet.com. GayDating.com. DiscreetGayDating.com <laughs> LGBTQ How gay are you? <laughs> the red graffiti letters blurred together like blood. Lesbian loser. <laughs> but I got used to seeing it every day. The edges of the wound started to knit together and then it didn't hurt at all. There was barely a scar. I realized I didn't care if you thought I was a lesbian loser. You never took the time to know me. Yeah, so? So I was proud to be a loser in your eyes because it meant I didn't change to fit in. Mm -hmm. And if I were a lesbian, I would have been proud to be that too. So what I'm saying is thank you. Thank you for giving me that courage. I have no idea what you're talking about. What courage? What, what courage? courage? You, you calling us cowards? cowards? We were friends, I thought, once, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. From her profile, she seemed nice, quiet, non-threatening. When I saw all the activity her account was getting, I got curious. I guess I get sw got swept up. My Mob mentality. You know, you never really realize that what you write on the internet is actually being seen by another person. 
Those things I wrote, I don't think I could have said them to her face. Maybe. What no courage. courage! The girl was lonely. I was trying to feel great. The bullies kept messaging for things like, Why are you still alive? You're ugly! Can you die, please? No, but I can live! It just kept going. Drink bleach and die! Why don't you kill yourself already? She started Googling ways to die. www.google.com She Googled, How many Advil does it take to die? Loading! Advil is an over-the-counter pain medication with the active ingredient ibuprofen. There are several consequences to an overdose of ibuprofen. Among them, damage to internal organs such as the liver. Other side effects that may be noted are... Blurred vision. Ringing in both or one ear. Drowsiness. Nausea. Including vomiting. Stomach pain. And confusion. In addition to the physical maladies that an overdose of Advil can cause a person, it very well may land them in a mental ward as someone who is attempting suicide. I have red pills for the wretched and yellow pills for the truth. I have purple for the thirsty the lonely they swallow blue. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Which color pill for you? I just want people to like me. How many Advil does it take to die? Don't answer that. Don't you dare tell me 222 or 612, because I don't really want to know. And I don't really want to die. What I want is for you to read these words. What I want is for you to consume these words. Don't assume these words are child's play or stare at this screen without understanding what I mean and resume your day? This is my life. This is not some sappy Facebook status. This is not some shallow about me section feigning sophistication and eclectic music tapes. And this is not me telling you what I had for lunch because I'm not fucking hungry. I don't want to eat at all. What I want is to become a part of an appetite. What I want is to sleep without wanting to dream of you. What I want is to be seen by you. How could you not notice me? Tell me you don't see me sitting in these dark corners. By myself, all alone. You think I want to be alone? Don't you think I need a friend? Can't, can't we, we be, be friends? friends? Can't you just call me? And I call you? Or can we just write letters to each other? Or can't I ask you questions that lead you to discovery and we to something else? Damn it! Damn it! We don't really want to know how many Advil it takes to die. I just want something more than your no reply. So, how many Advil does it take to die? I don't know. Why don't you Google it? <laughs> I didn't get on the bus. She didn't get on the school bus. I went to my favorite place where I go to get away from everything, this old abandoned cement plant. She left her mom behind in the trailer. On the pictures on the internet, it looked a lot like where I live with my mom. I love this place. She went to this old abandoned cement plant. Smells good. I love this place. Cement is strong and quiet and cold. She got through the barbed wire fence. There's, there's a hole in the fence. Cement smells so good. And, and, and there are these beautiful 
towers. And there are these really tall towers. And they look like two people with their arms around each other. Connected by a skinny bridge, she climbed one of the towers. With each step, I don't know how many steps. I feel lighter. Everything's clearer. I can see from here. I can see. It was her favorite place. I can see out. You know that place you go? I'm releasing my secrets. And when you just want to get away, I'm releasing myself. And I'm blending with the force of gravity. And she... She, she jumped. Shit. She was only 12 years old. Younger than we are. What's the last thing you'll think of? When you're standing over the edge. Grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Hashtag edge. Edge, edge, edge. Edge, edge of 13. Edge of insanity. Edge of extinction. When I see someone who's so self-absorbed, it makes me so angry. Over the edge. Over again. She walked around with her head down crying. Looking, looking at, at the, the ground, ground so far below. They don't care what impact their actions have on others, just as long as they end up the hero in the end. But she's not a hero. She's dead. Did no one notice her? She wasn't liked at any post. I remember reading this article in the paper about stress and trauma in third world countries versus the average teenage American girl. At Suicide Girl 86, <coughs> this will be my last. No comments. No likes. But shared three times. Overall, the teenage girls were 25% more in pain than people in the middle of a war zone. What sense does that make? It makes no sense. Hashtag Advil. Hashtag Xanax. Hashtag Valium. Hashtag Alcohol. After caring friends. When we heard that that young girl had killed herself, she just wanted some attention. We, we were just... I've messed with people on the internet before, made them think I was someone completely different. But they go over it. If they found out the truth... I couldn't handle that. No one ever. If I were part of the campaign that tipped someone over the edge... No one ever. That I know of. We were just... Joking around. Just, just joking. joking! Did you hear? About what? About the death! The, the death. death! Hashtag death! Oh my god! Check it out! This year! That's yep. so horrible! That's so hilarious. She was an inspiration. Rest, Rest in, in peace. peace! Man, what is wrong with the world? <laughs> What's wrong with you? I'm just expressing my opinion. <laughs> You're unbelievable. Person is offline. Coward! Now life can be yours for just three easy payments of your mental stability, confidence, and self-esteem. Order now! Chat and make friends online. She just needed a friend. We all need friends. What are friends? I've done that. <laughs> what? Bullied someone? I messaged this girl. I can't believe I'm telling you this. What did you say? You? Uh, I've known you since the third grade. You're not a bully. Even back then. But you seem so. It was this girl in third grade. I wish I could tell her how I feel, how I felt. Well, okay, pretend I'm her. Substitution. Like Mr. Martin has a stew. And go. <laughs> what would you say? I tell her the truth. You tell me. You? I tell you how I feel the fluorescent lights burn, burn my, my skin. skin as I look into your eyes and say what I say. I tell you how the seconds, days, hours, years pass as I look into your eyes and say what I say. My eyes. I see the salty water form in your eyes like the ones that form when we all take off our shoes for circle time. And the smell is so bad, so overwhelming that you just want to cry. 
I say what I say, those, those horrible words, because of what I feel. I feel the rough, dirty school carpet of my life, and I, I want, want to feel, to feel the soft, rubber, bouncy ball surface of yours. What would happen if you apologized? I don't know. Try. The thick, gelatin-like air would turn into a soft mist, and I could breathe again. And she could breathe. Breathe. And when we see each other now, we'd be breathing the same air. I don't want to be that person anymore. You're not. Not anymore. What are you doing? I just need a second. Hey, listen. I was a jerk earlier. I was just... No. I, I should have been there for you guys last night. And I wasn't. I was up there acting like I had it all figured out, and I don't. Yeah, nobody does. Hey, do you guys feel like we're ready to balance? Yeah. Stop! Another, Another child has killed, killed himself. Oh. <laughs> you remember that time in elementary you said I was musty? I feel like I've been here before. Displaced. Displaced. Shut, Shut up, up from, from house, house to house. No, not on this web page. I learned to never skip a shower. But right here, in the middle lap, in the thick of all creation, always, always pause, pause then play. play. Or that time you said my hair was crooked. I learned to never touch a razor again. They're, They're so, so alone, alone and afraid. afraid. Right here is where I feel like we could have met for the first time. You used to tease me for stuttering. Before we invented ourselves with punchline screen names and hashtag ego, I feel like... Always, always pause. I feel like I could have watched you crawl from your mother's womb and breathe in this world for the very first time. One day you made fun of my clothes. Then, then play. play. So I learned how to iron the very next day. <laughs> I see you in your first starch iron little league uniform. Some bases. You used to say that I was too uncoordinated. I see you bent over bland cafeteria meals with your eighth grade friends debating fast cars and even faster girls. Keith you never spoke, spoke to. So I learned how to straighten my posture. I see you feeling awkward for looking oh so dapper in a neat button tuxedo <laughs> on the way to your prom. You used to tease me for always looking scared. And I see you finishing college. So I learned how to look people in the eye. Your mother, decked out in her fanciest dress, is wearing an even fancier smile in the audience. You made fun of me for always mispronouncing my words. Pause. So I made sure I never mispronounced another word again. She wonders where the time went. It, it never, never stops. stops. You used to criticize me in the worst way. But I almost feel like you were born a man. Broken and battered. So I became witty. And I feel like you're too much a man to play. Play. Play the tough guy. I don't know. You're too much a man to hide. If you knew it. Behind subtle hints. You taught me. And no replies. You taught me a lot. All I wanted was to get your attention. 